everybody. Um, hope everybody's had a good month and everybody's been able to stay well. Um, let me pull up here. Excuse me, I'm just on one screen here, so. Um, okay. Um, can I have uh, an approval I, of the I agenda? Everybody's oh, sorry. Sorry, I lost sound for a minute there. Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, I just welcomed everybody and I just pulled up the agenda. So could I have an approval of the agenda? Is there anything that we need to add or anything? Uh, Councilor Broderick, Broderick? Uh, Deb, you second that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Any opposed? Okay, the motion carries. Hi, Terry. Hi guys, sorry I'm late. That's okay. That's okay. We just got, yeah, we just got started. Um, a disclosure of pecuniary interest or nature thereof. Everybody's good. Okay, approval of the minutes from March 9th. It was a relatively short minute. Krista? Yep. Motion and Councillor Broderick. Oh, Ted. Okay. Yep. Um any errors or omissions? Anything we need to discuss? I just want to um, uh, quickly ask Kayla if she can remove my hyphenated married name from the minutes. Sure can, Krista. Thanks, bud. It's been a couple of years now, so thanks. So just Taylor now. Yeah, thanks. Okay. 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 And Okay, and all those in favor, or er, any opposed? Okay, the motion carries. And uh, business arising from the minutes. Um, okay, uh, communications, plans. I don't think there's anything we need to bring forward at this point. Okay, and um, communications from the from the chair. Um, we received a letter, um, or I received an email from Bob Charlton um, just after our, our last meeting. Well, a couple of weeks ago, and he was asking about the library and the arena parking. So that's uh, one of the things that we're going to discuss later on today. And I guess we can we can probably bring it up now because I had a discussion with Terry and I wanted to bring it to the committee. Um, I think there was a, a little bit of a miscommunication just because we weren't seeing the whole plan. Um, and maybe uh, I think they were. Um, so what Bob wrote was the plans as I understand them are to continue to provide accessible parking with a nose to the building designated area west of the arena entrance that would require disabled persons to move from their vehicles and through the parking lot to the ex to the access ramp at the front door of the arena and the front door of the library which doesn't meet with our FADS document. Um, so that was the bulk of it. And when I talked to Terry and we started looking at the plans, we realized that some of the things that we were thinking, looking down on it and not seeing elevation, they weren't exactly what we thought they were to begin with. And plus the parking itself is kind of a different tender, right, Terry? Um, it's being done separately. It, it wasn't in the plans that Bob was looking at. So um, Terry's going to kind of give us a, an overview of everything that's happening. And then we can kind of go forward. There may be some things that we may want to comment on, but at this point in time, it'll kind of bring us up to speed as to what's happening at the library and the arena. Okay, Terry, do you want to go ahead? Sure, yeah. So um, so Deb, I was hoping uh, by now I would have the, the, the full, all three uh, projects, I guess you can call them within that one, potential tender. Um, I was hoping Burnside would have would have provided me that by today and they have not. So they're still working on the overall big, big picture. So you're gonna have to rely on my words today. Um, from the over, and then I'm gonna share my screen and show what we have as project one. Um, okay. So you'll see what I mean, but I just, uh, Deb, I, 
our last discussion we had, I was hoping to have more today to share with you. And unfortunately, I don't. Um, but anyways, I think I should be able to give you a pretty good picture. Um, so um, so this year, as part of our capital projects for the uh, for the Stainer Library and the Stainer Arena, we're going to be doing some landscaping work um, on um, as part of the new library, as well as our parking lot, as well as the west side of the arena where the skateboard park is. So there's like three components that are going to be part of one project. Um, I'm going to be able to share with you project component one which is the library um, landscaping project. And this was part and parcel of the original uh, designs of the library. Uh, project two will be, we're gonna be relining uh, painting lines in our parking lot. And, and that project will affect where um, Bob Charlton's concerns are of where the existing accessible parking is. So right now the, ex the existing accessible parking for the former hall is kind of like in the middle of nowhere. And that's gonna change as part of component two, which is reconfiguring all the parking in the arena here, because the entire parking lot is a parking nightmare. Cars park wherever they want. If you don't have lines, they park everywhere in every which way. And so we've known of this being a, pro a, a problem for us for a while. But we also knew that we we're going to be eventually working on the landscaping of this location. So we thought we would just include that as part of that project as well. So there's going to be an overall, all new lines. And, and then when we have that, and that's what I wanted to share with you today, um, the uh, accessible parking that's in the middle of nowhere um, will then be moved, but, up, but a nose butt up to the actual new library. So the new lake, the new location will meet our FADS uh, requirements. Um, as per uh, Bob's uh, concerns. So that second component should address that. And of course, component three, um, it's more of the park side of things, uh, doesn't really affect the accessibility at this point. Although um, part of our plan is to perhaps move the Legion Park playground. So, you know, like next to the arena, we have a, we have a playground here. It's kind of tucked in uh, next to the ballpark type of thing. So my thoughts is to perhaps move that playground from that very busy street um, into this new area where it's just kind of fenced in a little bit next to the uh, skateboard park. And I'm hoping to put uh, an accessible playground there as well. So there's new specs around accessible playground. So moving the Legion Park playground to this new section on the west side of the arena and incorporating a new accessible style playground there. So that's going to be, so like I said, Burnside is working on that, uh, on those designs for me. And I was hoping to have them today. I don't, so I'll have to share those with you that, at our next meeting. Um, but the good news is, is uh, you know, we're going to try to convert an existing playground to a new accessible for, <clears throat> for our youth as well. So three components, one big project, three components, um, and components two and three are yet to come. So with that being said, if you're okay with this, Deb, can I share my yeah. screen? and? Uh -huh. I'll show you component one. Um, Kayla, am I right in assuming I have the ability to share my screen? You do, Terry. Right on. I was doing this for the small hall, so I kind of got used to, to all those small hall meetings. Let me know if you guys see my screen. One second. There we go. Yeah. You guys see that? Okay. Yeah. Can you make it a little bit bigger? I can try, yep. So I'm gonna have to move my screen around a little bit so that you can see it, Deb. So can you guys see this a little bit? Uh, we can see the back part of the, we can kind of see the side part of it. So can you see where it says new one story library building? Can, do you guys see um, my little mouse? We little can mouse? see your email, Terry. That looks like you're showing us an email. Oh, that's not what it's supposed to be. <laughs> Sorry about that. Let's try it again. If you want to bring it up in the PDF, you can click on view and view and type. There you go. Yeah, there we go. that's perfect. Okay. Oh, so I was sharing the wrong screen. Sorry about that. Now you see this? <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right. So uh, let me zoom out just a little bit. Maybe you guys will get a I'll zoom out and then I'll zoom in. So here you can you can see the overall 
complete landscaping project. And then you can see, so I'll, can you guys see my little hand moving? Mm -hmm. Okay, yep. so this is the north end, north side of the uh, building. This component here is the brand new library. And then component one of the landscaping is this component that you see here. And it comes all the way through the front here and then it wraps around the actual arena doors on the mm -hmm. south side of the building. So this is all gonna be all incorporated as part of component one. Um, so I think, I think if I recall in the email, you guys have, have a copy of this. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Yes. So, and then in there, it has all the engineering designs, um, all the specs of what needs to be done. Again, this is my understanding. It's as per our FADS standard. Um, if I go on to page two, this is where I think also to address some concerns is that you can see here that if you look at this little black line here, when Deb and I were talking, we thought maybe this might've been like some sort of curb and it could be perceived as a bit of a curb, but it actually isn't, it's actually flush. So it's yeah. like existing asphalt to new concrete. So all this here, this is all gonna be all new flushed up concrete. And then again, again, when I have the, the overall plans, you will see that the new accessible parking. So the new accessible parking, if you can kind of envision that, sorry, the old accessible parking, is kind of like in this area here of the arena in the middle of nowhere. The new accessible parking will be up here in this area here next to the library entrance. So they will move from this area in the middle of nowhere to this area over here. And this should address the concern that was brought up by Bob Charlton. Um, I mean, he had a bunch of concerns. One is that, was there a curb here? And the answer is no, this is gonna be flush. Number two is that the parking will not be where they are now. They're going to be moved to a more, um, an area that meets our standards, which is going to be this area here. And the other thing is, is the other parking is staying, the parking that's um, over on the west side is staying where it is. Correct. But there will be an opportunity because it's flush, they won't have to go around into traffic. They theoretically could go around the front of their car and then come on to the sidewalk there. Yeah, right. exactly. Yep. West so, side. So we, we have two existing accessible parking just west of the arena doors. Those are gonna remain, those are in a good spot. There's no, mm -hmm. there's, you know, like you said, Dad, they can either walk from the front or walk through the back to this little sidewalk area. Um, I would even say it's even safer. It'll be even safer than what it is now. So we'll have two parking there and we'll also have uh, up to two parking here as well. Two parking when spots. You're, like when I said, I wish I had the I wish I had the overall top down view of the whole entire yard for you, but I don't have that yet. It's being designed. Um, it would it would assist in, in explaining my story a little bit better, but it's kind of the best that I can do for today. When you're like the ones on the west side are are just going to be uh, painting will delineate them, right? Yes. Um, more or less, but I think um, just be conscious that we probably should be providing a path of travel against the building as opposed to behind the behind the vehicles just the to, for it to be safe like to address what bob's talking about um people shouldn't have to exit their vehicle and then go out into traffic in order to get onto the sidewalk right on the west side here yeah on the west side there I thought he was more referring to the two existing. Well, I think that are here. I think he was. I think what he was thinking. Sorry, I'm sitting here pointing at my screen, but <laughs> um, he was thinking. I think that people would have to go around because remember we talked about those two those squares, and we were thinking that that was going to be where a ramp was. Yes. And so the way he was talking is people would have to exit their vehicles mm -hmm. and then go up the ramp, but we know right. it's not a ramp now. Um, those are tactile squares in front of the door for people with low visibility. Yeah, right here. Um, we looked at them and thought they were the ramp, and uh, and then we realized it was flush. So I'll, I'll zoom in a little bit, Deb, just to just to yeah. show what you were referring to. So you can see here. I'll, I'll go in one more time, so you can see these little squares here. So we thought that we thought maybe perhaps this was like a ramp to get up into um, these areas okay. here, but that's not, it's actually this new, it's this new okay. tactile okay. 
that's with there. Yeah. So when you're looking at these designs, it, that, it could be it could be perceived that those are ramps in the knot. It's just flush with the new tactile. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll zoom down a bit, just a little bit, just to kind of show you. Yeah. So it's completely fl flush. Does anybody have any questions about this? There's only going to be four spots, four accessible spots. As of right now, I'm assuming there's only going to be four. Okay. Um, we, we have our engineers that are um, burn sites that are actually producing the design for the parking lot with all the new paintings, because we also have to do um, uh, fire routes as well. So we have to have dedicated fire routes. So not only from an accessible accessibility perspective, we also need to meet the fire code and, right. and getting the emergency vehicles in and out. So the, um, yeah, so our engineers are working on that. And at this okay. time, I'm, I'm assuming that there's going to be four. But they're going to they're going to look at the overall uh, standards, the regulation, the you know how many the, the, how many people actually can come into our building, the size of our parking lot. So they use all those factors and they they determine how many parking spots um, will eventually be here. So I, I would think four as a minimum, but perhaps there might be more. But definitely two on the west side of the door here and two right in front of the door here at, at a minimum. Okay. Good. Do we have a timeline? For our construction? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we're hoping to uh, we're hoping to go out for tender uh, at the end of this month, if not the beginning of next month. Um, and our hope is, is that we have contractors that are available to do this work this summer. Um, but our plan is to have this completed by before winter. But now, obviously, the pandemic is going to play a part in that. We don't know. Uh, we know that a lot of the contractors are, are very busy at the moment, and we don't know their availability. Um, and we are a little bit late in the year. A lot of times, these type of tenders come out, you know, in the spring, early spring. Um, so we're a little late, so we'll have to wait and see. But our hope is to have it done by, by this winter. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Does anybody else have any questions? I'll just zoom back up a bit so you guys can see the overall picture. So there is, uh, just to let you know, Deb, there is um, a little bit of a committee that's involved in um, in this construction. So the library have a li has a library board, as you know. So there is mm -hmm. somebody that's been um, appointed by the library board to work with me to, you know, to get into the reads per se, to, you know, when we start talking about which brush uh, what type of flowers goes in what areas and, you know, really getting down to the, you know, meat and potatoes of what this looks like. Um, I do have a bit of a committee of a two or three people that are working with me to, to go through the fine, fine details um, as okay. well. Mm -hmm. awesome. But my um, understanding is that this company Envision, Envision Tatham, I think they're called. Mm -hmm. um, sorry, because your, your screens are in front. I can't, I can't see it. But um, so my understanding is they've, they've done this research as part of the overall tender of the library. Um, and we haven't changed this tender. Uh, so we haven't changed these designs. So this was just okay. pulled out of the original tender when they built the library. We're just bringing this one back. It's, it's engineered stamped and everything. Yeah. On, on the landscaping, is it, I can't tell, my eyes aren't that good. Um, are there benches and pathways or is it just grass? Nope, there is um, definitely, let me just, let me just move this a little okay, bit for you. Better. Yeah. So. Oh yeah, picnic area. Okay, cool. Yeah. So there's a picnic table. This so right here. This is all concrete. Cool. Yeah, all here, um, all next to the building. Um, there's grass on this side. There's grass on that side. But there's yeah, there's picnic tables here, pic accessible picnic table there. Nice. Um, and then this pathway walks. It wraps right around the whole front of the building here. So grass on this side concrete pathway on this side here. Cool. And that just kind of rolls into the park then. On the east side, it just kind of rolls into where the park, into Legion Park then. Yeah, this is all grass here from the baseball field. I'll, yeah. I'll zoom out a little bit. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, this just blends right into the to the grass of the baseball yeah. park. Yeah. yeah. Um, one of your comments was about the, the playground equipment. And yeah. I just want to bring to your attention that um, when we took out playground equipment in New Lowell, um, 
by the small diamond and put in big stuff at the big diamond, people were really concerned because all the small kids were playing at the, at the diamond and their younger siblings couldn't play in sight of their parents. So um, yeah. in moving that playground equipment, you, you may cause a little bit of a ruckus. Um, you maybe need to think about that before you do that. If you, you know, if there's some way that you can maybe split the playground equipment, it's probably, because it, they won't be able to see the kids, right? Right. Yes. If, if they've got kids playing ball, they won't be able to see them at the on the other side of the arena. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Good point. That that, that may be a maybe a problem. Yeah. And then and the playground, that specific playground is used for the smaller kids as well. It's yeah. not used for the bigger kids. So yeah, I could see how that might be. Yeah. So that's what, like I said, that's what I'm thinking about doing. Um, maybe we'll have maybe we'll have a park at, at both locations. You know, maybe yeah, I could promote and, to have, you know. Uh, because that park, that park area where the skateboard park is, you know, and we're putting some nice trees and it's fenced in and it's very, very safe. Um, you know, we, we can see a, a demand for that as well. So, yeah, no, I can totally, you can, I can totally see it, especially in that area when you have all of those, all of the houses there and everything. Yeah, yeah. I can see where the whole, the whole complex will be a drawing point yeah. for people. Um, yeah. I think it's great, but I, um, I just mm -hmm. think that uh, we we got our hands slapped once, right? When we moved, yeah. when we took out the equipment, and actually, what happened was a community group raised money so that they could put playground equipment back up. Right. So there is it is in two spots there in New Orleans. So right. So if if we don't if we don't put a playground there, we're going to have benches and we're putting a line of trees in and some benches and some sit down areas and some you know some shaded area. So it'll become a bit of a park. It may not have a playground in it at the beginning, but at least it'll be greened up and it'll look nice. And if, if you know if some families if the kids want to go on the skate park park and the other kids just want to play in the green space, that might happen as well. Play catch or whatever. Um, but yeah. yeah, I mean I see the traffic go by here in front of the Stanner Arena. Thank God there's that one stop sign, but it, this traffic is pretty quick. Mm -hmm. So if I could, sorry about that. If I could, give me one second. New phone, I don't know how to press do not disturb yet. <laughs> okay. Um, so yeah, so I mean, we'll, we'll play it by ear, but at least it'll, yeah. it'll be set up and be ready to go. And I just, it'd be nice to have an accessible playground. I, yeah, and I, I think like moving forward with that, I think that's a great idea. Like, mm -hmm. and even if I know that playground equipment is so expensive. It is. Um, and if we can, if we can start small and with intentions to build on it, I think that's, that's awesome. Like if we're putting something inaccessible, if we're, we're moving forward and getting something accessible, that would be awesome. I've seen some nice stuff. I was in uh, Pembroke. And they have a beautiful accessible park. They have this new type of rubber type of ground that, you know, mm -hmm. and so just coming off the sidewalk or coming right off the pavement and they have this beautiful rubber ground and this wraps around all the playground equipment. So it's, it's absolutely perfect. Pretty pricey. Well, that's, but that, yeah. that's what I'm kind of thinking of because now we have the pavement here with the skateboard park. So you can come right off the skateboard park pavement and come right onto a path that would wrap around the playground. You know, and even have mm -hmm. like a little path to the benches and stuff or to certain trees, it would be fantastic. So, sounds exciting. Yeah. Pardon? It sounds exciting. Yeah, it does. Yeah. So, like I said, the, the, the priority is to get the library landscaping done first and the parking lot uh, painting. Uh, get those two done and then we'll work on the part three right after. Okay. Mm -hmm. My question is, and I might have missed this, and I'm sorry if I did, um, that um where the baseball diamond the park currently is like there's that ditch that's there mm -hmm. is that obviously getting all leveled off um the that you mean it's a bit of a sway there right like a bit of a yeah. little yeah, mini it's, just, dip. it's like it's like a mosquito heaven it's like murky moldy oh it's disgusting <laughs> yeah. and when your soccer ball and your frisbee which mine just did on the weekend goes in it it's it's putrid it like yeah. it's gross it, it, and just having to hop over it you have to hop over it to go and play yeah. frisbee um i have to look at the those designs because i think part of that sway is designed to try to flow the water out from out of the parking lot yeah you know, it doesn't someone, and i know it doesn't flow so it might it need to be there. yeah it might need to be fixed up a little bit perhaps to flow well, the water out. It, that's why i'm bringing it up today 
Yeah, I'll double check the plans. I think part of the plan has it, but I'll double check. Okay, yeah. awesome. Thanks, Terry. No problem. Yeah, cool. All right. Um, is there anything else before we move on to the other plan? So, so Deb, one more thing. So, um, like I said, once I get the uh, final designs for the what the parking lot looks like, um, and even what that playground kind of thing will look like, um, I'm hoping to have it for your next meeting. Do you guys meet once a month? I forget your yep. time lines. Okay. Yep. So I should have it for next month. Um, okay. So I'll, I'll bring this back. I'll bring back the, the library again. If you have any other questions or concerns from now until then regarding the library component, let me know. If you want to read some of the fine print, fill your boots. And um, okay. and then I can answer those questions and I'll bring back the parking lot design. You'll see where all the parking is, you know, with the blue would properly. Um, I was, again, like I said, I apologize. I wish, I thought I was going to have it today. Yeah. And I, I oh, we're so disappointed, Terry. <laughs> I just don't want to waste your time, right? Yeah. Everybody's busy, yeah. so I want to, you know. In an ideal world, we'd be sitting around a table looking at the big blueprints. So, <laughs> yeah. Good point. Okay. Okay. And the other, um, the other thing we were talking about was uh, the downtown, downtown core, right? Yep. So you too. Yep. Yeah. So I will share that one as well. I'm just bringing that one up on my screen here. Just give me a sec while I place it up a little bit for you. This one is a little bit more clear. Again, very exciting project. All right, let me, um, before I go there, before I start I share my screen, just to give the committee a bit of an update. Um, so this again is part of the standard downtown revitalization plan. This was a, a study that was done by council approximately four years ago. Um, it started about four years ago. It was completed about three years ago. Um, and it was, it was, there was a consultant that was hired by the town to come up with some really nice ideas on how to improve downtown Stainer. Um, so then the consultant of the day um, provided us three, a three-phase approach to improving downtown Stainer. This is phase one. So we're still unfortunately on phase one of the overall vision for downtown Stainer. Um, obviously last year as part of, because uh, of COVID, it pushed us back a year. So we were actually hoping to ha start and complete phase one in 2020, um, but we got pushed a year and we're hoping to start uh, doing phase one this summer and hopefully have it completed for sometime this winter, if not early next spring. Um, and then once phase one is done, um, we'll move on to phase two and phase three. So today you're going to see the final engineered designs for phase one of downtown Stainer's plan. Let me just share my screen. I'll try not to use my email this time. Uh, it's not the screen. Sorry, it's not coming up. One second. This beautiful technology. Great when it works. It does. There it is. I got it. All right. You guys see this? Yeah. Okay. So um, again, if you can see my little hand, this is Highway 26, downtown Stainer. This yeah. here is, is Brock Street, heading down, wrapping down to Centennial Park. So what you see here today, so phase one is all these components that is north of Highway 26. Phase two will be part of the gazebo, um, the gazebo park, the tourism center um, on the south side of 26, that'll be phase two. And phase three is the actual main street and then um, some areas next to the town hall. But for today, we're only talking about phase one because um, that's this is where we're at for this. So you, would, you can see here, um, new proposed parking. So if you drive by Brock Street right now, this little green area here is where the existing kind of parking is. It's full of holes and it's full of mud, even worse than the sway that we have here, Krista. <laughs> it's, yeah. A, yeah. it's a muddy <laughs> hole in this area here. Um, and there's a bit of an existing uh, train, tra there's a bit of a trail as well as the uh, previous train tracks that are there today. This new proposed plan um, is greening up the area. So you can see all the new green space that will be created. We're creating new parking. So we have 11 parking spaces on the north side of this little break. And then we have eight plus two accessible parking on the 
uh, south side, I guess you can see I have this little break here. Um, and the reason why there's a bit of a break here is because there's a bit of there's a hydro pole that's here and a little mini gender um, transformer that's in this little area here. So that's why it's been broken up into two like this. So you can see the two new proposed parking. Um, and then again, on the west side of Broad Street, there's three additional parking that's been put in this little area as well, in which the town owns. Um, so again, I, I will show you uh, on the following pages, close-ups of these little areas here. Um, so again, you can see um, there's going to be two trails that are going to be that's going to be constructed. There's this one what we call people trail. If you follow my hand, which will come up to this new concrete, um, what do they call it? Concrete walkway. And then the snowmobile trail that kind of uses this people trail at the moment will be relocated on onto on top of the existing train track trail. So that the existing steel train rails will be removed and the snowmobile trail will split here at this little Y here and it'll have its own dedicated uh, snowmobile route and it won't affect the actual people route. So we're actually gonna have two trails now which will split those up, which we think is perfect. Um, we actually have a little bit of a proposed little parking area on the, on the east side of, of the existing tracks for snowmobiles in the wintertime as well. So if they wanted to park in this little area, and they could always walk downtown if they would like. Um, so again, here, concrete pathway, um, people trail here, uh, the snowmobile trail up on this area, uh, all heading down here, funneled down to this park. So the purpose between this project is to one, improve the parking in this area that's, that's a disaster today, um, add a bit of green space, some picnic tables, some, perhaps some benches, relocate a little bit of that Lions Club sign that's kind of in this area to this more area here, and hopefully, um, and prepare this area for phase two of when um, to help people cross Highway 26. So a question I always get is, um, is the proposed, if you look at the original, original plan, there's a proposed kind of walkway across Highway 26, um, because we know that's a real traffic that's going by there very quickly. That's going to be part of phase two. So for phase one, it's only up to this little sidewalk area. Um, again, there's a proposed little parkette here, which is kind of next to the existing exit realty building. So I'll zoom in on that in a second. And then another little walkway area down here by the, I think this is the golden flower area, I think if I recall. Um, so I'll move and then, So then there's also a path that's going to be a, a lighted path that's going to be created to get to the park and another little path here to kind of get to the bit of this parking area. Again, very exciting. Let me scroll down to a, a little bit of a zoom in for you, um, the enlargement. So again, this is the um, area next to the exit realty that we're hoping to occupy and to have a little bit, some, a little bit of a concrete pathway here, some benches, there's even talk about a bit of a steel trellis that might go on top. I think I have some pictures for you I can probably share. Not real accessible issues, but if you're a resident of Stainer, it's very beautiful. Um, and again, this is the second area over here. And again, just improving the pathway here to get from downtown to the park. Is that the one by the Belgian Pride place? Yes. Yeah, okay. Is it is the golden flower on the other side of the Belgian Pride? You mean the golden apple? Golden apple, yeah. Why do I call them? Golden flower. Yeah, golden It's about on. halfway down. Halfway it's down. Okay. um actually it's on the other side of Exit Realty, I think. So the, that opening is uh, Belgium Fries and Hair by Sue is that alleyway that's there. That's where it is. That, that right, yeah. brings you right out at the crosswalk of the lights there. Yeah. Thanks, Scott. You're the man. So again, here's a zoom in on that location um, that I was referring to. With the part, it's a bit more of a zoom in. Um, you can see the, um, it's again, all it's all designed to meet our FADS standards. And you can see the, um, the, the two proposed accessible parking on this side. Um, I think I have it on the next page where it kind of shows the flow between the two. But again, very, I think very, very exciting. And let me see if I have another one here that shows the actual, here we go. 
Oh, here you go. This is the benches and the trellis that I was talking about. Oh, here. those are nice. Yeah. So that's good. That's proposed for the uh, exit realty location. And then here's these little light bullards that will light up the trail, both trails, some of the trees. And I'll see if it, no, it doesn't have on this picture here. I was hoping to find a picture of the, uh, it's written in the little words, but that would show the transition from the street to the parking area, but there's no. So these are all, there's all curb cuts there and stuff so that it's a smooth transition. Yeah. And it's like to the walk, it to the paths and stuff. Those are all, there's curb cuts and stuff so that a wheelchair would be able to access them, access them all. Yep, exactly. Okay. Yep. I was hoping there was going to be a picture of that. There isn't. It's just written in, this, in, the, in the fine details, you know, the specs of that, but yes. So you can kind of see here the existing train tracks I was referring to, mm -hmm. and and then the people trail with a little bit of a green space in between. Um, cool. Yeah, and then again, and yeah. So then, so this whole this whole area here that's the dark green that's all built out into Highway Twenty Six. Then, like that's a that's not there now, right? Um, no, my understanding. No, we're not touching Highway Twenty Six at all. So this is the existing. Okay. So, I, mean, I think it's just existing okay. pavement right just now. Yeah, like we okay. definitely we're not infringing on Highway 26 at all. This is existing okay. space. This might just be like an overflow of pavement right now. Um, but okay. yeah, we, it, maybe we're, just, it maybe just looks a little bit different because it's not finished that way. Right. Okay. Yeah. No, we it's, it's a provincial highway. Um, we would still be working on this project if we had to go into Highway 26. It takes a while to consult with the ministry on those regulations. Um, but yeah, I know this is all existing, all existing space. Even okay. here behind coffee culture as well, there's some proposed green space back in this area because this is actually owned by the township as well. Let's see if I can zoom up. So there's some green space here and some, we're going to try to beautify so up this little area as well. So is all that path area, is that all owned by the township as well or is there land acquisition that's re here? required? Here? So no, no, yeah, this no, is, the path, the path areas. Oh, the, the other ones going down over here. Hold on a second. Yeah. These two here you're referring to? Yeah, these are, this yeah. one here is owned by the town. There's an existing sewer line there. Um, okay. But, no, these are not owned. These, we need to work with the stakeholders um, and have lease agreements to use those spaces. Yeah. Okay. We're, we're working on those still. Yeah. Okay. But no, we but we do own part of this path here. Yeah, a, I a, thought that I thought that was an existing access point. Okay. So let me just go back to the main view, top down, and if anybody has any questions, I apologize for the, the bit of a de delay. I think my computer is doing too many things at once. <laughs> Maybe it's like a male that has trouble doing a bunch of things at once. <laughs> In this this pandemic time, they keep saying that we just need to do one thing at a time. Yeah. So does point. anybody does anybody have any questions? No. No. Ted. You, one thing that was helping me through this process was um, I put up um, our mapping system and also use Google Maps. So Google Maps will give you the street view of the exit reality and la pizzeria of where that will come out and then the belgium fries and the hair by sue's location of those two uh spots that he mentioned um also by using the aerial footage um it shows you where everything is currently at and you can kind of overlay the um two um maps that uh, terry provided and google if you have to just use google but it kind of will give you a better reference of today and uh Terry's tomorrow. Yeah. A lot of the times I end up bringing up the Simcoe maps just to look at stuff, but you're right. So are we have, of, sorry. No, go ahead, Deb. Sorry about that. Are no. all of the people trails, or would I think that's what you called them, are they all cement? Uh, no. They, so the concrete walkways is dark gray area here. Right. And no, and they, these trails are usually um, uh, stone, uh, stone dust limestone. They, um, trying, to, trying to give you a bit of a, it's called limestone screening. 
it's like a um, it's like a if you go to all of our existing trails have this limestone screening right now. Um, okay. it's, yeah, it's not, but, just, but it's not paved. Yeah. So it's a very fine, fine screening that with the water it tends to hard pack over time. That's correct. Okay. Yeah. yeah, if you go on any of our trails right now, you'll see that it's existing limestone screen. No, but no pavement. No. Okay. Uh, Terry, the the trail uh, going back from uh, Exit Realty there to to Brock. Uh, some of the existing trees there hang over pretty low to that. What's the plan for that? Well. <clears throat> Councillor Broderick, the last time we did a bit of a site visit there, um, I think, I know what you're referring to, I think they were still deemed to be okay at this point okay. um, when we had the engineers and the architects on site. Um, but I think at some point in time, they will become a problem. Um, I think we're going to have to have a discussion with the owners of this property here mm -hmm. and see what they propose to do. Um, for this plan, there's no proposed work for those trees um, okay. at this time because they were still high enough. But they are coming down. They are slouching more and more every year. Yeah. Um, they will become a, an issue. Um, we're going to have to talk to this landowner here and, and have a bit of a plan on how we're going to fix that. If we either cut them down or do we plant some new ones. or, um, But that's not part of this plan today. Okay. Yeah. Good question, though. I haven't been asked that question yet. <laughs> <laughs> Ted, is there anything you wanted to comment on, or do you have any questions? No, oh, I'm just thinking of accessibility issues. Uh, other than the type of walkway, I can't think of uh, where access will come in. Uh, where the where an access issue would arise as a result okay. of this walkway. I mean, it's. Uh, Beautiful, it's a great idea, but I can't see it uh, where we can add much to it. I guess tables to sit on regularly. Yeah, to kind of, those are, you know, if you're looking at somebody who um, is parking and then walking, probably wow. even benches kind of so far or so people have a place to rest. Yeah, try to figure out what they'll do. They'll go to the restaurant, get a coffee, and go out to a bench and sit there, I would guess. Yeah. And do some shopping on Main Street and then do a stroll, you know? Yeah. It's, um, it's really nice to tie Centennial Park with the downtown, though, because it's kind of, you know, it's back there and people don't realize it's there. Right. Um, I think that's that's kind of exciting to kind of bring all of that together. I think that's, an, that's a good idea too. Yeah, there might be some opportunity, um, like Ted said, you know, later on to, you know, once we actually build this green space here and this other one down in this area, and even perhaps on its way down to the park, to perhaps add more benches or more shaded accessible parking, um, sorry, picnic tables and stuff. Um, it's not proposed yet in here, um, but it's, it's easily, we can easily add it after the fact if required. Um, I think right now it's just, you know, it's easy to look at these designs top down, but you don't actually know how much space you've got until you actually get there and you actually build it. Um, so I think there was no proposed, there is some proposed benches um, over by the exit realty location, mind you, but nothing over in this area yet. So at Centennial Park, is there any parking at all? Or is it just roadside parking? Just roadside parking. There might be uh, some new parking spots created as part of the new pavilion. Mm -hmm. uh, right in front of the Kingsman Pavilion, there might be a couple of parking spots that got arbitrarily made up just because of the, con of the construction. But it's mainly all um, parallel, park parallel parking style parking <laughs> on the main okay. street. Because I think maybe we should, that's something if we're, you know, kind of encouraging people to use the whole space, that having um, a couple of accessible park parking spots down near Centennial Park mm -hmm. that are delineated as such, maybe close to the path that goes up to downtown, because it would be a, 
and Brock Street isn't as busy a street, right? So if people could, you know, were able to park there and then come up through the path, yeah. that might get them to down to, you know, downtown, whether they want to go that far or not. Yeah, so let me just kind of zoom in this little area here. I think you're referring to this, um, I think you're referring to this little area over here, right? Yeah. yeah. Here's a bit of the path here. There's a bit of a bus stop here. Uh, the pavilion's kind of more in this area. So you're thinking more in this area here. Yeah, kind of somewhere along there because those other parking spots are kind of a long way depending on where you're going. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely something that we, we can look into in the future for sure. Yeah, yeah it's a good idea. Okay. Oh, Tammy? Yeah. I know that as a group, we've had lots of conversations about um, you know, walking distance for people that have trouble walking, um, doing the downtown space. Um, but we have put benches on the main street, haven't we? Or um, can somebody, I'm trying to, I'm sitting here trying to remember if we put benches on the main street. I thought we did. Yep. Yes, we did. Yep. But there's, there's still more to come. And there's more to come. And so when we're talking about, um, I forget who asked the question about benches, you know, in the new green space, um, you know, it's um, part of our conversations in the past have been how much walking distance is it for the person, you know, will they have a place to rest in between? So uh, so it would be really exciting when we, um, you know, start to see it come to fruition to see if there's an opportunity for benches along that trail as well. Yeah. Exactly. Let me. I'll just go back up to that picture, and you can kind of, you can kind of visually see what Tammy's talking about. I was pointing at my screen. That doesn't help. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> me yeah, too. So, so along this area here, you're thinking, Tammy? Yeah, I am. That's sort of where I was thinking, and you know, because it's quite a long ways. Again, I'm pointing mm -hmm. at my screen. Quite a long ways from the. Um, you know, accessible parking spaces and then uh, back around to Centennial Park, right? Mm -hmm. um, so if, if people, so I, I recognize the accessible parking is probably uh, good for our downtown, right? In those first few stores and then there's benches at Exit Realty. Um, mm -hmm. But if they're headed to Centennial Park, that might be a long stretch for, for folks to walk. Mm -hmm. So it, that that and this is so I love I love seeing these kind of things. Um, it's just so exciting to get more people to our Stainer location and and to see what a beautiful place it is, right? Yeah. <clears throat> well, and I know people like people always talk about parking on the main street, but you know I come into town and I park at the administration center and walk through. Like it's it's so much easier. And I think for a lot of people, you get off the busy street and then, you know, you're not all worried about your parallel parking and everything else. It's kind of nice to have other places to be able to park. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the fact that you're making parking before you redo what's going on at the gazebo park, that's probably yeah. like over, yeah, over there, that's probably a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There's a, do you know the second pathway or the third pathway? You have the concrete driveway and then you have the limestone screening, but there's a big space in between. What's there? Right here? No, over here. Over, 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 over. No. The other side. The other, the the other trail. On the west side. Over here? The one yeah, on the one west more. Side. This one. There's a big empty, big blank space right there. You go. What is that? That I is, um, yeah, and I, and I wish I could probably show you, like, a, like Scott said, like a Google map. Um, this is like an existing driveway. Oh, okay, um, okay. There's a, there's a driver in here, so we can't occupy that driveway, so folks oh, will have okay. to arbitrarily kind of walk across this driveway okay. to get this path, but it's one of the owners, is it a hotel here, or there's, there's something going on in this area here, where, right. or is this it's where the, the uh, sorry, yes. It's behind the restaurant, yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, that's the Belgium fries area there. All right. There. Okay, couldn't remember what was there, and I thought there's a big empty space. It can't be dirt. 
if if you want, I could share my screen. I have the maps up as I've been going along as well, and I could show you because a lot of this stuff is actually already delineated um, just by nature itself and human traffic. Um, the trail that you were just referring to, it actually does exist uh, by human foot traffic and probably kids' bicycles going through the back there, cutting through Belgium Fries or whatever, and going down into Brock into that area. There's a Scott, are you sharing, Scott, Scott, are you gonna share your screen? Uh, probably could, yeah. Uh, let's see, which one do I share? Screen, try that one. Screen two, share that one. Is that working? Oh, give it a sec. Yep, that's perfect. Okay, so here's the one that we were talking about, and there's that parking area that kind of stopped. Oh, okay. This is Belgium Fries right here. Okay. And Hair by Sue is there. And all this right. is the path. This is all like driveway in here and parking for these places back here. And then this is a beat down path. Okay. It goes all the way back to your park is back here. That other path that he's talking about is going right through here. Okay. That's where that one is. And then all your the trail currently and the tracks, you can barely see them, but they're right there. Yeah. So, and then that other spot that you're looking at here, that circle roundabout thing and, and the delineation of the highway and everything that's okay. already existing in the parking spot with the snowmobiles he mentioned here. Okay. And what I can do is I'll switch screens. You can see this now. There's your path that's beaten down and goes in behind and heads for okay. Belgian fries. Can yeah. you see that? Oh, yeah. And as we turn, they're using this as parking yeah. currently here. There's a car. So maybe there's something there that can be utilized as future parking or maybe one accessible parking or something there. Because as we go back around Brock, or just bring you around by Google Map here. This is the other path and it's got a little bit, oh, that one there is the other path okay. that will go back through this way as we go back to coffee culture. So there's the parking currently there and there's that pathway that's already currently trail there. And then I'll just make a U-turn, oh, wrong way, here, we'll go that way. Um, where am I, one more. Mm -hmm. My, there's the exit Realty and La Pizzeria. So that's where it will come out. Here's that okay. one trail that he's talking about. Mm -hmm. And then the other one at Belgium Fries. One more. One more. Whoa. Whoa. Went past it a little bit. Like it. There you go. Okay. So the other one is like through here. Okay. And Hair by Sue and Belgium's there. So I'll just pop back to this one that's right there at the lights going through there and then that i'm going to bring this over just that you guys have seen this already so that's where we're looking at there some parking back in there the parking in the landscape and the roundabout and then that trail that came through there so that kind of gives you some visual perspective and that's what i was doing when terry was laying it out i had this up and my google maps to give me a little bit more perspective mm -hmm or some realization to it. So hopefully that helped you out a bit in navigation of yes. Terry's plan. Now, question again. <laughs> Maybe you shouldn't have showed me that picture. Um, the trail that's already there, is that that gravel that we're going to be using? No. Okay, so it's... you're going to put something different there. Yes. Okay, yeah. okay. Because the stuff that's existing there, you can't walk on it. No. At least it's... I can't as a with braces i can't yeah. walk on it as it yeah. is so yeah okay. no we we have um so we have standards for our trails okay so all new trails that we built um if you go behind the tourism center right now last year we built a brand new trail that goes okay. right next to the tourism center okay. um so you'll see the material and how wide um of trails that we actually built that'll give you a good a good idea of what kind of how wide and what kind of material we use for our trails okay so it'll be just like that Okay, yeah. good. 
Yeah. It'll be even <laughs> widened because the one that Scott was showing is kind of grown in with the, with the grass. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's more of a people slash bicycle trail, but it'll become a, a full fledged trail. Okay. With, with board lighting and um, you know, lit up. Yeah, it won't be that stuff. Okay. All right. That's fine. But Deb, you I can see, see that, huge... that green area that you were referring to right there. You know, you were asking yeah. if we were infringing on Highway 26. You can see that space there. Yeah. I didn't know it came out so far. Yeah. yeah. No, that's fine. Yeah. yeah, I saw that whenever Scott was showing the overhead. Yeah. I gotta, Scott, I gotta, if you turn the other. Yeah, that's the that's the limestone there, right? I, I, no, I think that's, no, that's just a driveway. Uh, this Google map, okay. I don't think, has incorporated the new trail yet. Maybe not. I can see if, um, I don't know so if I got... I don't know if I can see it from the super building or not. When was when was these uh, Google Maps taken? Do you know? Uh, they could be a couple of years. This says 2015. So oh, yeah. yeah. I can't, see it. Okay. can't see it from here. But even I think if I, were... I think I know what you mean. Yeah. So if you go down to Warrington there. Road, it shows you can see it on the path there. Yes, that one is should be limestone right there. Yeah. That would be limestone. It's a little wider than that, mind you. Okay. You can tell yeah. those are 2015. Yeah. Yeah, but it gives you some sense of what it is. Okay. Yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. So hopefully that hopefully that helped with a little bit of visual. Yeah. Okay. That was awesome. Yeah. And I have another question. What was I that? Have another question. I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, that's okay. Oh. Um, so you said for... that the railroad tracks are coming out or the ties or whatever you want to call them are coming out and you're using that in the winter for a snowmobile trail yes which great perfect for those that do the snowmobile what will it be used for in the summer can people walk on it or they could. atvs or bicycles or yep they could be used it? it could be used for other um, it's going to be a path. It's going to be a, you know, it's going to be a snowmobile trail. It'll be what you kind of see today. Um, okay. you know, but yeah, it, it won't be like one of our, um, standard trails, you know, okay. the thickness and the same material, but it will be, it could be used by anything, you okay. know, bike, biking or whatnot. We're hoping that people, because we're creating the two trails, we're hoping to be able to get the, the bicycles and the motorized vehicles off the people trail, get them onto a secondary trail. Because right now it's kind of it's it's being used for both. Yeah. Right. Um, so we're trying to delineate that to have a proper people trail. Okay. That was that was the idea. The idea right. behind that. That trail yeah. will okay. link up at either end of the at either end of the town because mm -hmm. there's the rail trail at the north end and then the Warrington Road Trail at the other end. Yeah. And the really good thing is is that Simcoe County purchased the uh, former rail line. Uh, yeah. from the previous uh, uh, train mm. company. So, um, so now they own that line. So it, it provided a lot, a lot more flexibility to us to be able to utilize, um, you know, that, that former rail trail, a rail line, I guess you can call it. Yeah. I think it's, it's good to keep it in public hands as far as trail development goes. Yeah. It's uh, a good plan. Yeah. Okay, anybody else have any comments or questions or anything before we... Move on. Yes, Scott. The people trail going to be um, pl uh, plowed in the winter at all, like uh, snow removal then in that area? Yeah. At this time, Scott, yes, we're planning on uh, clearing that out for the winter time. I mean, we're going to see once we get going, but yes, the plan right now is to um, remove the snow on that trail so people can access that trail in the winter time. Yes. Cool. It's going to be wide enough. Cool. It's going to be. Um, it's going to be built to be able to withstand uh, snow removal. That'll be awesome because then that'll keep um, your snowmobiles and your people separate because people tend to use the snowmobile trail anyways to walk. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Especially in that area because it's really busy there. Like it's yes. busy on 26. Yeah. Okay. Um, any other comments from anyone? Okay, thank you very much for coming, Terry. That's uh, very helpful. Um, I think you've kind of uh, 
Yeah, thank you. Um, is there anything, any other new business that we want to talk about? Or um, I think we've kind of um, responded to Mr. Charlton. Um, should we be sending a response to him, Tammy? Um, should I send one directly to him or should we be? I think that would be great. Um, uh, Deb, if you could send, um, you know, send him a, a letter in response to say that we've, you know, reviewed it and and, and that okay. uh, actually the concerns are have been met. But um, and I'd be happy to help you with that if uh, if you'd like, or or Kayla and I can work together on that. Kayla, I'm volunteering us. <laughs> um, but I think that. Uh, okay. okay, so now that we've discussed it at the meeting, could somebody make a motion that I? I script a letter to Mr. Charlton to respond to his concerns. Sorry, I'll move my stuff out of the way. Just, okay, Deb and Krista? Uh-huh. Okay, just so we we know that everybody everybody's discussed it and I'll just indicate that, um, you know, there's a three-phase plan and uh, we've discussed it with Terry and uh, we're kind of aware of what's going on now and he's gonna come forward whenever there's more things to see. But um, right now we, um, there wasn't a complete plan, and I think we're we are addressing the the issues that he's brought to our attention. And the curb okay. was an assumption. And the curb was an assumption. Yeah, I yeah. think yes, yeah. yes, exactly. Yeah. Okay, I'll put uh, I'll put something together, and then I'll run it by Tammy and Kayla to make sure that it, everything's fine. Okay. Um, any is there anything else? I move my okay. So our next meeting will be May eleventh at three thirty, and um, Terry may have more stuff for us then. But uh, we'll wait and see. Um, anything happening with the small halls at this point in time, Terry? From a, from a, um, no. Well, yes, there's lots going on. Uh, nothing finalized yet. Um, so we've met all the okay. uh, small hall boards, and now we're just waiting for their feedback um, and their, uh, you know, to the presentations that were made. Um, but mm. no, we're still we're still early in the process. Okay, okay, good. But you'll keep us abreast of what's happening if anything anything moves forward. Yep, for sure. Okay, excellent. Uh, can I have a motion to adjourn, please? Krista? Okay. Yes, <laughs> okay. My, my um, meeting minutes are like a curtain and I have to keep moving them off my screen so I can see everybody. Okay. So motion to adjourn by uh, Krista and we'll see everybody in a month. Okay. Awesome. Stay safe, guys. Take care, everybody. So, we'll Bye. Bye.